That's the style of music. That energy. It's about feeling like you're like flying. You These people go out and dance, they want to have a good time. Oh. It's a symbolized by. Fist and hand just pop. It's my life. I practice it, I sleep it, it means everything. I consider this the music of today. The new dance sound is a new pop, no question. It just stems from, I guess, the first feeling. People respect what dance music is about. It doesn't matter if you make rock, if you make hip hop, if you make house music. We all share the same passion. Please. Something I've been um, working on during the the holidays. So I'm really excited that I can play tonight for the first time. It's a really exciting night because I love Glasgow. I don't know why, you know, I always had kind of a special relationship with people here. And, um, and also this story is really important to me because it's my first like uh, serious UK tour. You know, of course I played many, many times in the UK, but this time it's like every day in a concert hall only me headlining, so it's uh, it's important. Do you have a name for this track? Uh, yeah, no, it's not the final name. Right now it's called Midas Touch. But right, very often we kind of pick random names at the beginning and turn it into something. Like I have lots of tracks called like, you know, Budapest, uh, London, like the place where I am, you know, when I make the track. You all right? See you. You ready? Ah, uh, you ready? That's the yeah, question. Ready. I'm always ready. ready. Yeah, no, it's looking good. Part of the history of house music, there was this moment where they were burning the disco records in stadiums. And it was the end of disco, but it was also a very racist act. They were in a way burning black music. And then, you know, a few guys started to sample old disco records, especially B-sides and create their own disco records because there was no more productions. It was just poor black kids with no money who discovered all these electronic machines and, and they, would, they would make these weird, strange music. Strange, dark, sparse, minimal stuff. So the DJs that wanted to keep on playing this music would program drum machines and add little pieces of disco records that they would loop. And this is how actually house music was born, by recycling disco into something new.
something really special here. When the party is good, they cheer and they go like, here we, here we, here we fucking go. And at the beginning, I was like, like the whole room was singing this. And I was like, what, what are they saying? Especially with the accent. And, um, and then I understood. So let's see if tonight they go, here we fucking go. That's a good sign when they do this. What David Guetta symbolizes is like translation to people that might not know house culture or dance music culture. And then David Guetta translates it to those other people. What he's done is bring awareness to dance music in a big way. I'm not really sure exactly what motivates David, but I would say his passion for the music, his love of the music, and the power that music has to transform your life and your energy and your spirit. I mean, you can put a song on the radio, or you come to a club and you may be down, but you get immersed in this music and the beat and the rhythm and your life has changed. And this beat that I just finished today, you're the first people on the planet to hear it. And I promise you something, when I'm gonna put out this record, the name of the record will be rave sound in the early 90s but that kind of came in with a, a witch hunt so it got squashed so it never really kind of took off electronic music and then what happened was all the guys that were making electronic music like house music from Chicago house music from New York techno from Detroit everybody kind of picked up and went to where we were appreciated it was England where it really first took grip and, and you had that whole, whole idea of you know, rave culture, club culture, and people living for the weekend, and that, that, that whole scenario, and tribes and clubs, and following the DJ, that really, really kicked off in, in England. That was fun. It was wicked. And I love that new beat. It's cool, huh? Woo! The, the last beat I played, like the new beat, yeah. I have to call it Glasgow now. Yeah. I said it. <laughs> yeah. Now nah, it's going to be called Glasgow. In the early days, it was very, very different to as it is now in some respects. In many respects, it's exactly the same. It's still as going from A to B, sleeping in a hotel, getting up, traveling to somewhere else the next day. But what was different then is we did gigs for no money. It was about the quality of the show. Who did David want to align himself with? Which DJs did he want to perform alongside? But at this time, he was bottom of the bill. Tu peux demander à David qui te les envoie? Hein? Clock mix block on Kiss, Jesse J, B O B. We have got. David Guetta coming in the studio in just a few minutes. Yeah, minutes. can you um, can you please uh, call Akon and see if if he could uh, do those vocals? Well, Everything sounds <laughs> it's crazy. Everything sounds the same. You it's, it's unbelievable. 
Please welcome to the show, multi-Grammy award winning, world's best DJ, world's best producer, David Guetta. <laughs> Thank you. How are you finding time to be here? Because you're like the busiest man in the world right now, aren't you? Yes, but I'm happy to be here. You've got a smile on your face. That's all you can of hope course. for, isn't it? Of course. Of course. Come uh, on. Can we quickly... I've looked at the iTunes charts. It, it put me in such a good mood this morning. Number one on Sunday? Yes. Yeah? Number one everywhere in the world. Almost, almost. There's a few countries where I'm only number two, I'm sorry. All my life, I wanted this music to be as respected as hip-hop and rock and pop. But it wasn't. We were like the remixes, you know? It was like not even the music itself. For so many years, we've been a bastard child of the business. And finally, now, everybody wants a dance record. It's not only on the internet, you can hear it everywhere and get it everywhere and get commercials and ads and it's unbelievable how it's kind of crossed from being one thing into this, you know, big pop monster. <laughs> Tonight I'm playing at Brixton Academy. It's a big deal, it makes me very nervous, it makes my heart beat, which doesn't happen so much time because, you know, with experience you get confident. But every time there's something really new, then I feel like I'm 17 again and it's my first gig in a club. And that's how I feel tonight. I discovered House because I was working in a gay club. Not that I was gay, but the only job I found was in, in that club. And I so wanted to be a DJ. I was, you know, I was obsessed. And it was like, it was like a drug. I knew I was working in a gay club, so I started to study what was going on in the gay clubs in the US and in the UK. It was like 87, you know. And I heard what was going on in Chicago, uh, in the black gay clubs, and in New York. You know, I discovered Father Jack Master Funk, this kind of records, and they totally blew my mind. And, and I spoke to the owner of the club. I told him, listen, this music is crazy. This is going to change the world. It's Acid House. I need to understand if Chris Willis is supposed to play during my set or if he has his own set and he wants me to stay on stage. He, he thinks... Oh! There he is. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you know what's happening? I think I'm playing during your set. Yeah. In 2001, I, I met um, a guy called Chris Willis and it changed my life. He was a gospel singer. He had nothing to do with dance music. He didn't know anything about this world. And I was explaining to him what house music was about, you know, and he was like, yeah, but you know, I'm a gospel singer and, and I don't know, you know, I might go to hell for this. I'm like, man, just see this as a church. 
You're just preaching to different kind of people. Oh, what are we supposed to do? After all that we've been through When everything that felt so right is wrong Now that the Lord is gone The record for me that changed things was uh, probably Love Don't Let Me Go. This was very much in that 80s-esque kind of inspiration and actually a hybrid version was created later that featured a group called The Egg. Uh, and that was a breakthrough in the UK market and that really pushed things open. UK was the reference, you know, when it comes to this kind of music. So for me to have a successful record there, that was definitely the beginning, you know. What many people don't know is that David is not just some fly-by-night DJ that just arrived on the scene out of nowhere. Not at all. David and Kathy have both been dedicated to the scene for many, many years. David and I, our passion is people, music, and uh, nightlife. David one day asked me, Kathy, you need to start our career now, you need to, to find a location to do some, you know, parties and, and I was afraid and uh, he took my hand and he said, don't worry, we try to, to do and we see after, you know, but it was artwork. And he, he was really running a couple of uh, amazing parties in Paris that uh, everyone wanted to play and he was also very ahead of inviting guest DJs, stuff like that, which was really new to everyone at the time. People like DJ Pierre and Lil Louis Vega, David Morales, Frankie Knuckles, all those guys. It was like a gift to my clientele, you know, so that they understand what this music was about. And it was a gift to myself, because for me it was an opportunity to understand how they were doing it. Okay. I didn't know what making music was until I heard house music and that sort of totally took me to a, like, a different level. Just love the feeling of just forgetting everything and being on the dance floor, hands up in the air, and feeling of being able to take on the whole world. It's complicated, it always is. It's just the way it goes. This record is really special for me. It was the first single of my previous album, um, One Love. I was playing in a club as a DJ, and I was playing the instrumental of uh, When Love Takes Over, and she, she came to to ask me, uh, what is this record? It's beautiful. And I said it was mine, and she proposed me, you know, to write and sing on it. Wow! I was so nervous that you were not gonna like the new version. It sounds amazing! When me and David met, I felt like we were in the same place creatively. We just needed something different, a spark of something new and refreshing. To be able to hear that combination of soul and house, it was just incredible. And I told him, I said, you know, this is an emotional record right here. It's almost like you're in, in a party, but yet you're crying at the same time. We kind of just mixed those worlds together and we got something special. The first time I heard Kelly sing like that and express herself as an artist like that, it was something new for her, uh, as well as the beginning of something incredible, you know, for, you know, house movement. The Grammy goes to David Guetta for When Love Takes Over. I'm David Guetta, bitch. Oh my God, I don't know. Okay, I gotta calm down for one second, I'm sorry. Finally, the DJ culture and the dance culture is uh, growing in America. I love you all, this is a happy day, thank you. I would spend 
spent days in record shop just looking at the records and I couldn't afford to buy them. I would go to places to touch the technique. At the time, the, the techniques, it was like a turntable that was like really trendy. And it was my dream to have one, but I could not afford it. So I would just touch it. I would stay like an hour staying at the mixer or the turntable. It's uh, different from anything else when I play in Paris. It makes me very nervous, because I know my friends are there, all my people. I cannot even explain it. It's, it's like today you would think, oh, of course you're nervous because it's 80,000 people, but it's not even about that. Even when I play in a club in Paris, I'm nervous. It's, it's, I don't know what it is. It's a little bit stupid, but that's the way it is. I was like a really famous DJ in my city, in Paris, but famous meant the owners all wanted me to play in their clubs. Because people would go out in the club because they say, oh, the music from that club is really good. But no one knew who was playing the music. No one cared. We didn't care just to be able to play music and get paid for it. It was a miracle. His style of dance was always electro over soulful, you know, vocals. So we felt he would be the perfect person that can lead this whole movement forward. And this was a direction he was already headed, so it only made sense for us to get together. We're making new music! <laughs> is that, what is that? Is that, uh, is that dance? Is that urban? It's called move music. Move music, that's good! And we came and created Sexy Bitch. And the world wasn't the same. <laughs> I think the Sexy Bitch record took things to a whole nother level. It showed that hip hop could really be fused in with electro dance and create something just on a whole nother level. I started one of the first house night in that gay club and I met a night at the time that was called Un Unity and I was mixing house music with hip hop which was totally crazy because at the time you know like hip hop gay clubs it was really different so that's how I discovered house music kind of by accident and then I, I never stopped playing it The evolution of music, house, uh, pop, electronic, all of it together uh, is a new expression. House music scene is not just, you know, exploding, it's taking over. The pulsing beat of house music, dance music, funky house, electro house, they all have that undertone and the tempo of it as well just makes you just Wanna dance. Get get it get down down Get get it get down 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 Get 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 down 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 Get 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 down 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 Get 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 It's so much energy It's so much hype It's so much love It's people just completely forgetting about their everyday lives and just getting lost in music. I just wanna F F F I just wanna F F F I know that I'm terrible with the camera. I am really not a good actor. And uh, as much as I feel good in the studio or on stage, I feel very nervous when I have to shoot a video. Because I usually look like an ass. 
this is David Guetta, that's my brand new single, it's called Where Them Girls At, and it's featuring Florida and Nicki Minaj, enjoy. Roll camera, playback. <laughs> Well, dance music has been the sound of the charts for many years in the UK. The part that is really important that I play, I think, was to make this happen in America. Everything was sounding so much alike. Everything was just so, just, it was just redundant. We went from hardcore R&B over hip hop beats, then we went from 808 clap, then we went to auto-tune, and then the dance wave, you know what I mean? And Dave was the, the most instrumental part of that whole process. If anything, I have to be thankful for David is to be able to bring what we do to the mainstream and open doors for everybody else. He took the house DJ and put, put them in the forefront. He said, like, I want to make music that everybody goes crazy to, like, and that crosses over and that bridges the whole hip hop aesthetic that he liked from the beginning. And like this, I think, whereas for Dave and me, that's completely not, I mean, we, we wouldn't even dare to set that goal. David did just help all of, the, all of the other DJs as well, because we wouldn't have these festivals, we wouldn't have these audience if, the audiences if it wasn't for uh, the mainstream crossover. Well, in the way that kind of what we did with Big Beat was kind of mixing, you know, two cultures, two kinds of music and making it sort of commercial. I think Dave's done that, carrying the American R&B side. He's always got an ear for something that's accessible and big. And also with one toe in the underground, but also very much, I mean, crossover would be there. I don't want the French ears for crossover, but you've done it, David. Settle set. Let's roll camera. That was my whole point. I wanted to create a bridge between Europe and America. I wanted to create a bridge between electronic culture and urban culture, a bridge between white people and black people, because at the time you had the urban radio, which means black music, and the pop radios, which means white music. And it was totally separated. I'm David Ginner, bitch. My wife is the opposite of me, you know, I'm, uh, I'm totally more of a, uh, it's all in, inside of me, you know, I love to spend time, you know, with my laptop, making beats, and she loves aesthetic, clothes, looks. So she's really helping me on this. Yeah. She's looking and she's helping me on what to wear today. She was helping me on, you know, be careful, you look like an idiot. <laughs> Close your mouth. <laughs> you know, that's her world really. You know, because she loves fashion. She's always, you know, she goes to those fashion shows and, and I stay home making my beats. <laughs> My ambition was to be a, a resident DJ in a good club, you know, and then my ambition when I was a resident DJ in a good club was different. And that's, that's the thing is that I'm never really satisfied, which is good because it makes me always work harder but it's sometimes bad because it's very difficult for me to enjoy the moment. David Guetta has a dope ass sound. Eh, 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 eh. I'm joking. <laughs> it's influenced by techno and by pop music, but it's very, very much influenced by house music for sure. Undergroundy drum track, 
sort of European pads and a big American fuck off chorus. Being able to just sit back and listen to what, you know, all of the elements and go, all right, you know, this plus this plus that makes a hit song. I got a feeling changed everything. I got a feeling changed my life. I think it also changed Black Eyed Peas' life. Uh, and I think it changed <laughs> pop music. I asked a friend, yo, you know the dude that, that produced Now That The Love Is Gone? You know that dude? I like that song. He was like, yeah, I'll call him on the phone right now. So he called him on the phone. I was like, yo, what's up? My name is Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas. We're working on a new record. I want to, you know, collaborate with you. He was like, ah, oh, my name is David Gacha. Uh, uh, you came to my DJ set at Club Pasha, and I give you the microphone. Do you remember me? I was like, that was you, son? He was like, this was me. Uh, you remember me? We collaborate already. I was like, cool, so why don't you send me a beat? And the beat that he sent me was, I got a feeling. He's like the first dance DJ that said, okay, you can bring dance music to pop. And Will I Am is like the first pop guy that said we should bring pop music to dance music. Putting them together actually created the doorway for dance music into pop. I went to Los Angeles to finish the, the record with him. I was shaking, literally. I was so afraid. I was used to work in a home studio or with my laptop. And in all a second, I was there in a badass studio, the Black Eyed Peas. Everybody was coming to say hello in the studio, like Puff Daddy and Buster Rhyme and, and, and uh, Chris Brown. And that was all on the same day. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. You know, this, this is America. That's what that song did for David Guetta and the Peas, was that it was translation. It allowed people from different walks of life to have a commonality, and that commonality was, I appreciate and I like this song. It's about the evolution. I mean, it's not a matter of one style, one style. Styles are meant to be crossed. When great musicians and great producers and great songwriters get together, something has to happen that's it's incredible. And that's the bottom line. I'm loving how different artists are working together and making hit records because it just sets the bar even higher for the rest of the world. Sometimes I wake up, I don't even know where I am. It's not gonna change my day because I'm still gonna make my beats in my bedroom and I'm still gonna play in, you know, this concert place or, or this festival. And the people that I have in front of me, I wanna party and go crazy and, and you know, escape uh, for one night, you know, from a difficult life. I think David Guetta, what motivates him is his love for music, his friends, his family, his past, what he's been through, the people that's been there for him. He hasn't abandoned the people that helped him. And that shit's dope. What makes a good DJ is to know what a crowd wants. And he could, you know, he, he plays that crowd like, like no one else. In my mind, I was still a normal DJ, but in their mind, they, they were going to see a concert. So that's when I started to, you know, work on a show. 
it's not a DJ in the corner in the dark playing somewhere. It's actually people staring at the DJ and watching the, the show to happen. I think the type of experience that I give is it's a lot about interaction with the people. It's the same way that their parents used to go to see a rock concert, they go to see a DJ. Whereas at the time, we were just an employee of the club. My musical culture comes from Chicago and New York. So when I was a kid, just, you know, if someone would, was telling me, okay, this DJ works in New York, you know, he's like one of the best DJs of New York. That was a big deal for me. He's an old school DJ in that sense. He likes clubs because he, he feeds off the people. And he's also very enthusiastic. He, he makes, like, puts his hands up in the air, talks to them in the microphone, does all this stuff. Even me, we can't, we, we've never done any of that. Like, we'd be bad at that. People would be like, no, just keep playing. In that moment that he's DJing and he's got his hands up and he's got the two fingers in the air and then he just continues the music gets higher and bigger and louder and just like, really? Really? Am I flying now? <laughs> you feel like that's, that might happen in that moment. The party. LSD DJ ever. The music is international. Most of the DJs now, what they do is that they start by being producers, and because their music is successful, they start to tour. It was not like this before. I started as a DJ, and then because I was so passionate about the music, I started also to make some special edits of records that I loved, but couldn't fit in my DJ set. So I started to add beats on the top, and then that was like a remix, you know. But that was only 10 years ago. And I've been a DJ since I was 14, so all those years I was practicing my mixing, you know, instead of practicing my music. Support Lands, the one and only, David Guetta! The way he broke through and is a real credit and a real lesson for a lot of people to, to, to learn, which was that first he just, he was, you know, nobody wanted to pay him any money and he would just call up clubs and offer to play for nothing. He was just chipping away, chipping away and everyone that had him, you know, loved what he did and would ask him back and then they'd pay him a little bit more money and just slowly but surely kind of work his work his way up and it's, it's, it's all come through, you know, hard work and determination. The fact he really does make the music. I'm recording an artist for the first time in the studio, and it's Tyler Cruz. Thank you very much, man. <laughs> Thank you so Hopefully, much. Um, we'll make a lot of hits together here. I think so. Okay, to you, I can say the truth. I'm fucking dead tired. I have three gigs to go today. Interviews, I feel terrible. That's the real, the real truth. 520 uh, wind shear, uh, 10 to the left. It's an increase of 10 knots at 1,500 feet. I want to thank everybody for coming down to the party. And we have Tayo Cruz on the plane. This is kind of a scoop. My second single will be together with Tayo Cruz and Ludacris. And uh, we're gonna perform it live for the first time actually on this plane. I think it's working! We went for the first time in Ibiza 16 or 17 years ago. And uh, some, you know, some customers say, you need to go to Ibiza because you love clubbing. You know, it's, Ibiza is for you. And one day with David, they say, yeah, you need to try to go there. 
And when we, we were in Ibiza, you visit in a one night, you know, space, privilege, amnesia, pasha. It was, you know, a, a, a kid in front of the, you know, the Christmas tree. It, it, it was fantastic. Ibiza is really, really special to me because I first went there on holidays, you know, and whew, it was a revelation. And I remember like David Morales was playing a remix of Jamio Kwai. All those parties, everything was about the music and the coolness and, you know, and I love it. The kind of whole house movement in England was always kind of a back and forth with Ibiza. Everyone kind of makes the pilgrimage. You meet, you meet old friends from all around the world and they all congregate on this one island for 10 weeks and have a big party. I've always likened it to kind of, you know, if you're an athlete, you want to be in the World Championships or if you're a footballer, you want to be in the World Cup. And Ibiza's still like that. It's still you proving yourself at a, a top level. with the crowd is really unique you can change your set every day if I start a certain way and I'm like oh no that's not it I can change totally the direction of the music and that's unique no I'm gonna grab something to eat yeah. It was crazy! I loved it. It's been a long time. I haven't done a free party, man. But you know what? It's still the best. Thank you. Gracias. We start Fuck Me and Famous in 2000, and, uh, but the brand, is, it wasn't like today. <laughs> At the beginning, we are uh, just a, a, a small team with uh, David and, uh, and my brother, my best friend, and me, five or six people maximum, you know. And uh, when I was uh, pregnant, I was in a, in a beach in, in Ibiza, and I gave to the people the, the flyer. And David, too, he, he, he worked all the time, all the time. And it's... For sure, it's our secret. Katy is the strongest person. I, I, I've known them for a long time. And uh, I remember they came back together on a plane from Ibiza. We landed in Paris, must have been about 11 o'clock at night. And she says, I'm going to work. I've got a business, I've got to go. And she went straight from the airport, straight to the club. And I, I looked at her thinking, She's made out of brick, man, you know, she's so strong. You know, my favorite place <laughs> is this, it's here. It's a perfect combination, because, you know, between David and me. Because David, you know, thinking about, you know, only music and the meat. I'm, you know, I'm more decoration and performer and, and the, the promotion staff. And it's the best combination, you know. Have a great show tonight, okay? We. Ça va? Ah ben ouais, ça c'est bien, ça tu vois. Oui, j'ai les chevaux là. We met together, we were not even adults. You know, it's it's almost like we raised each other. We shared an apartment that was smaller than this hotel room. We had no money. We were fighting, you know, the the world. You know, I really feel like this with her. It's like it's like if you went to war with someone, you know, I guess it's 
it gives you a relation that is really unique. We knew the bad day, happy days, and cry, and, uh, and you know, we, we share everything together, together. I'm driving down the street, and I see a picture of him and his wife on the billboard. That shit's hot. To me, that shit's dope. David Guetta, his wife, Kathy, like, did she play a role in it? Hell yeah, she did. Right? And that is hot. Start since 10 years with a small party at space, you know, 200 people. And, you know, and the 10 years after, you know, Fact Me Infamous is huge, it's sold out. It's, it's fantastic. My wife told me that everybody can see that I just woke up because I went for a 45 minutes nap and my hair is like this. <laughs> some quite interesting gigs together. The bit, my favourite was when he played for us at, on Brighton Beach and Paul Love, he played in the rain on New Year's Day. Imagine how cold it was. And he came off a little bit early and I was coming onto the decks and I said, um, I said, why did you finish early? He said, I ran out of uh, equipment. And basically the rain had just electrocuted everything. And he carried on playing, he played the last half hour on one deck and just talking to the crowd. This is the most beautiful day of the year. Because it's the opening of Ibiza season. And all the party people from everywhere in the world are meeting and reaching out together for one night. It is something about being in that moment at a Fuck Me I'm Famous party, at a party where he's just DJing, at a place where maybe he's with some friends and he gets on and it just, he creates a world. One day they should invent a, uh, a, a term for it, like get house or something like that. It does make a lot of people very happy. Yeah, it made, it made me smile tonight. I remember my teacher called my parents because she was really worried for me, my math teacher. And I said, but it's okay, you know, I want to be a DJ. I don't need, you know, to be good in math. She was like, what is it? And I was explaining her, well, you see, I use B-sides and acapellas and I mix records together and I create loops, and you know, and they were like, but, this is not a job. What are you talking about? Do you think you're going to make a living out of this? Everybody that comes here, they come because they love the music. It's, it's the mecca of house music, you know? So it's DJ Paradise. Can you tell us a little in the album coming? I felt that sometimes, you know, I need to go back to my roots. So this album, and it's the first time that I speak about it, is actually going to be a double album. To make a full electronic album, it, it takes a lot of energy and, and, you know, it's not something that I have to do on a business point of view because it's, but it's something that I needed to do on a personal point of view, on an artistic point of view. <laughs> It's a balance you need to, to fit. You, you'll always have people that will say, oh, you're commercial or you're not underground. And I feel David does an amazing job of trying to balance both. The reason why he's that pop star is because he's also a credible DJ. It's kind of, that's, that's, I think, the reason, you know? The, the, the reason why he surpassed all of his peers is because he's just better at it than, than anyone else. The thing is that I never wanted to choose. That's the thing, you know, I love music and I think good music can be, you know, underground and good music can be mainstream. You know, being super hyped for me is really not a criteria of quality.
Playback. The biggest change for me in the in the house scene is like uh, it's, it's the collaborations. You know, it's hip hop featuring house. House music is the new hip hop, and they want to work with us. And you know, people call me up nowadays and are like, can you fit something in the schedule? And uh, to us, it's a dream come true. Battle set, roll camera. When you are a little French man, you know, and, and, you, and, you, and all of a sudden you are being almost copied by some of the biggest pop star in the world, like, I don't know, Rihanna, and collaborating with Madonna. I mean, it's, wow, you know, <laughs> it's something. Everybody wants to be a part of this new thing that's coming up. Little Bad Girl is a good example of my work process. I tried something that is not very normal, which is like the rapper to do the second verse and to have the second verse to be inside the bridge. So it's really not a normal structure. I mean, it's kind of a risk, but I like it like that. Passion is the biggest drive and the biggest motivation for it. Because if you don't have the passion for it, you won't even be motivated to work hard. You know, it doesn't even feel like work to us. It's like we do this in our sleep. We was doing it way before the big dollars and the big bucks came in. We would have been doing this broke in our basement still today. You know, so that's the advantages that we have. We love it more than anything. And normally, when you love something, you do it as much as you possibly can. We were speaking together with Jean Yi and, and saying like, remembering when we were teenagers and seeing, uh, you know, like big rock bands coming with the helicopter for the concert and, and saying, wow, this is so crazy, you know? They're using a helicopter to get on the stage. And now it's me, it's crazy, it is really crazy. be traveling from continent to continent, country to country, city to city, and still have the same work ethic, the same focus, you know what I mean, and still be alive. He needs to be sleeping is what I'm trying to tell you. Oh! Oh! Come on! That style of music, that energy, that impact in the club, that international sound, that world sound. And it's just that feel-good music, that music that's symbolized by people putting their fists in the air and just pumping it. David is really good at kind of coordinating this, you know, mass circus, if you will, of, of musical styles and artistry and people come along to the party and it's irresistible. When you hear his music, it's like no matter what you're going through, no matter where you are, I feel like I'm in the middle of a party. <laughs> It was about time. You got one of the greatest at what he does, and I'm the greatest at what I do. And we wanted to take a chance, see if we can mix and match, put my voice to that electronic sound and see what it sounds like. Can you be my Can you fix me up? Can you me down? When I get this song, it's gonna be a number one song around the whole world. And I'm like, the whole world? You're like, the whole world? And I don't ever really talk to producers like that. We just talk about sections like, this song is gonna be a hit single, or it's gonna be this, but no one ever says, number one in the world, and everywhere I went, I was top five, so he told the truth.
Does it ever feel weird for you just coming off playing to 80,000 people and now you're here on your own? Do you, do you ever get over that? <laughs> no, this, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about like feeling lonely after being with a lot of people. But that's not now. That's when, I, when I'm back in my room. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's a little difficult. <laughs> Shay David, get it! Shay David, shut the house! Shay David, shut the house! Yeah. Back in the day, I fell in love with house music through hip hop. I believe it's it's back to merging with hip hop nowadays. So. We're in, we're in a full circle now. Every time he sort of evolves and comes back, you get a little bit more on top of it. You, you get a little bit more um, intricacies. You get a little bit more like advancement in it. And, and that's, that's what makes it exciting. And now we're really trying to make like the, the next level of hip hop. So a combination of dubstep, electro, and the old crunk beats and the old hip hop, and combine it all to make a completely new form of hip hop. Flavor Flav lives in Vegas, and I used to be a hip hop DJ, and I, and I was playing Public Enemy. So for me to see him was really crazy, you know. This is how most of my records are happening, you know. Like Akon, I met him on a, in a festival, same, you know, and we met Sexy Bitch on the same night, you know. So um, Kelly Rowland. She was in the club when I was playing the instrumental of When Love Takes Over, you know. So, you know, look, today I just met Flavor Flav, maybe something's gonna happen. I, I love it when it happens like this. Oh my God, it's Flav again! <laughs> Hello. Just kidding, for real. Two years ago when we met, I was this, and now I just play the main stage of EDC for like 30, 40, how many people? 30, 40,000 people. David Guetta is like, to me, it's like, he's like my brother. It's like family. It's really basic like that. It's private. It's like, we, we speak each other like almost every day. Like, really the glitter good. on your shoes was nothing compared to the party. <laughs> yes, it's nice. He's jealous because his feet are so big that they cannot make shoes like this for him. This I was this a two. fan and now I have fans. For me, I really like it. This is no bullshit. Like when I discover like a new DJ and he's like really making me trip, I, I'm a fan. Even if he's on 20, I feel the same that I was feeling when I was listening to Masters at Work. I was like, oh shit, you know. I still feel like this sometimes, you know, and I love it. I love it. I didn't, I don't think I'm changed. One time he stayed in my house in Holland, and I don't have like a big uh, spinning house because I, I'm not a super big DJ yet. So, I, uh, so we we slept in my bed, and I have like a really big bed, but it's still like just a, a king size bed. So we went to sleep like five o'clock in the morning, and, and I woke up like eleven. I was like, I looked next to me, and I saw David sitting like this. <laughs> oh, good morning. <laughs> How are you? I was like, weird. He even had a cup of coffee and I didn't know, even know I had a coffee machine, so... What my drug is, is that connection with the people. It's very important for me that, you know, those crazy party people, I need them, them are fuel. I think I've done really all the craziest <laughs> shit. All the crazy shit we did tonight, those will be the best memories, right? <laughs> Since 20 years, 22 years, we, we are together, we worked so hard. 
just the dream for David is to be a DJ and in Paris or in France maximum, you know? And for me, just to work on, on a great club. Our working together represents um, what he calls house, what I call Rev. You know, um, when you hear soul and house work together, that's what we create. I can't win. I can't rain. Yeah, man, this is massive. This without you. My life is like running all the time, but I'm not complaining. I'm in love with that lifestyle and and because you know I have so much to learn and, and so much to achieve. We can imagine you know our life now and it, it was uh, uh, it was uh, a miracle. It was uh, a miracle you know nobody <laughs> sorry. It's really crazy to see that what I'm doing today is what I was doing when I started to be a DJ. I think he's now at the level he wanted to be, and now he's going to push it as far as possible and he wants to make it legendary because that's what he's been working for for the last 10 years. Honestly, I think that, you know, he stands on the shoulders of many giants that came before him. What he's done is bring awareness to dance music in a big way. Yeah, I don't know where he'll go next, but I'm sure he'll have a bash. It was impossible to imagine that I would become this, and it was impossible to imagine that a DJ would become this. And that's why it is also interesting. It's not only about me, it's about the culture and, and the position of, uh, of the DJ. When I started this, Watching the world. Good night, everybody. Watching them all go insane. Look at them all. Look at them do evil things. So I go out and dance. Party my problems away. Look at me now. Look at me now. Look at me dancing again in the club. Came to rock on out to escape from the world. Watching the world, watching the world, watching them all go insane. Look at them all, look at them all, look at them do evil things. So I go out and dance, party my problems away. 
Look at me now. Look at me dancing again in the club. Nothing really matters in a club. Nothing really matters in a club. Nothing really matters in a club. Nothing really matters but the beat. In a club. Feeling like a star when I walk in a house. Hey. DJ spun that record and he burned down a house. Hey. Just like MC Hammer, I'ma turn a mother out. I'ma rock the dance floor. Uh, check me out. Hey. I came here with my people, we gon' fuck up the place. Hey. I was stressed out, so I had a getaway. Hey. The world is going, man, I think they're going crazy. Hey. So I just gotta break.